So first off, it has been super fun emceeing for you guys. Thank you. Um, and this final t uh, talk is Dan Stevens, who I have, I've known for a while now. He's been an organizer with Write the Docs. He's run the meetup in San Francisco. Oh, we got some thumbs up. He's run the meetup in San Francisco. He's very passionate about the Special Olympics and Habitat for Humanity. He's just an all-around cool dude. So final talk, Dan Stevens. Hey, everybody. All right, there can be only one speaker left. So um, I'm here to talk to you about Atlassian and my uh, information experience adventure, something I'm really, really passionate about. Um, but when I first started in TechCom, one of the things that I was told in the beginning was tell them what you're gonna tell them, and then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you. Um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is a little bit about my path to Atlassian because everything that comes before informs everything that comes after. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about our transition um, from a pretty standard tech writing group in, uh, the Q in the QA organization to our transition to being a part of the design team and basically rethinking everything we know about technical writing. Um, so I'm gonna talk in wins, frustrations, and hopes. Um, then I'm gonna talk a little bit about resistance to change because change is hard, but it's not impossible. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about making confluence behave, but really what I'm gonna talk about <laughs> really what I'm going to talk about is design influence on our existing tools. Um, and uh, next I'm going to talk about uh, what IX means to me. And here's a clue, it's not just a fancy title. Um, this is the part where I'm the most passionate. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are going, because this journey is just beginning. Okay. So a little bit about my path to Atlassian. Um, in my travels on the way to Atlassian, I started out in healthcare, where I learned a lot about observation. Some of you might have heard my talk um, at the San Francisco Write the Docs about using observation. Um, essentially, it taught me everything I needed to know about how you observe the world around you and how that applies to what you do. Um, and then I spent a lot of time at the University of Minnesota learning about rhetoric, and I apply a lot of that to my technical writing because things have a technical purpose, they have a marketing purpose, they have a business purpose, and then they have a rhetorical purpose. They have the purpose of like, I'm trying to get you to do this thing. And getting you to do this thing could be all the way down to button text, or it could be an entire article about how awesome this thing that I'm trying to get you to do is. Um, and then I'm gonna talk, or whoop. Uh, and then I went to Medtronic where I learned about the specifics. Little, little, tiny details matter an awful, awful lot. And we know that as technical writers. Um, and then I went to Kroll on Track where I learned how to survive a challenge. Um, it was a company in a lot of turmoil and I had to learn how to adjust on the fly and Finally, I had to learn how to take a big risk and go somewhere else, which led me to Atlassian. So let's get started. Um, our transition from the QA organization to design. When I started with Atlassian, um, about six weeks after I started, they flew me to Sydney, Australia, and we started a conversation. And that conversation was around what do we believe tech writing is, and what does it mean to us, and where do we think it needs to go? And we started with the basic idea of let's do what developers do. Developers write great code, they get code from uh, open source libraries, they find out what works and then they make, that, they make what works repeatable and then they spread what works across their companies and then across the world through open source movements. So let's do that. Um, and so some of our big wins so far have been we've built a culture where information is considered an essential part of the experience. Um, that's probably the first and the most important thing that, we have, that we've uh, begun to do, and we have only just begun to do it, but it's really, really happening. Um, and it's such a critical element of making all the other things happen that we want. Um, the next thing is talking about, one of our big wins has been a, an expanded team. And now when I say expanded team, you'll see a little bit later that uh, like we've had to redefine what we, what we consider the IX team or what we consider the tech writing team because we're now truly a part of the design organization. So what is it, uh, so we got researchers, developers, designers, um, and then we share those skills with each other. And I think this has been the most important thing um, out of the wins is we've all learned how to be a little bit of a designer, a little bit of a user researcher, a little bit of a developer. 
we've started to share those skills with each other. Now I work essentially, um, I work primarily on a product called Bitbucket, and then I also work on a lot of our developer tools, and I lead the team of uh, writers and IXers um, who <clears throat> work within all of the software teams for, uh, for Atlassian Cloud products. Um, we just reorged, so I'm having to rethink that a little. Um, some of the frustrations. Um, definitely applying new ways of, adopting new ways of thinking um, is not easy for everybody. I'm an evangelist and I'm like out there going like, let's make this change and let's start talking to everybody in the training department. Let's start talking to everybody in the marketing department. Let's start talking to all of our developers about how they write UI copy. And then, you know, let's do all these things together and let's make these processes repeatable. But then the very minute that you give me a template that I have to follow, I go, I don't wanna follow a template, I wanna be creative. And, um, and so I'm, I'm an agitator, like I'm an, ad, I'm an evangelist and I'm an agitator at the same time. So I make everyone around me nuts. Um, and, but it's hard. Um, staying focused on writing great docs. When we became a part of the design organization, it's really, really tempting to go after the shiny thing in the corner. There's the shiny thing in the corner. I can make this new graphic or I can, like we can do videos or we can measure new results or we can do all these other things. And we have to remember that we're about writing really great documentation. We're about helping our users and we are writers. And, and it's, sometimes it's frustrating to see the shiny thing, but remember that like you're a writer and you have to do your job. Um, and then what does it mean to be our team? Our team kind of dissipated because we became a part of the design organization and we each work on different products as a part of the product team and we're a fully integrated part of our dev teams. And so is there an IX team left? And there is, um, but it just means something different now. And what we've decided, what we're starting to land on is that IX is a craft within the design organization. Um, and that actually has turned out to be a big win um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Hopes, this is one of the terrible uh, slides. It's got way too many words on it. Um, everyone who delivers, our hope is that everyone who delivers information in any way throughout Atlassian, throughout every product, in every way that a customer experiences information, they're telling the same story. And that's, that's my big hope. Um, that information is thought about as a part of the, in every way that it impacts, it's thought about as a part of the experience. So if you're writing some UI copy, you're thinking about that as a part of the information experience and that should connect to the marketing copy and it should connect to the blog post and it should connect to, or the reverse should be true. And the blog post should connect to the UI copy which connects to the support doc, which connects to the blog post, to the um, marketing copy. All of these things should connect. And that is the, how a customer experiences information with our entire universe. Um, that we combine design, research, data analytics and great tech writing, and I think we're winning on that. Um, we're already making a lot of progress, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward. And then finally, the, the, the penultimate hope is like, we deliver amazing information experiences in exactly the right place, in exactly the right time, and in exactly the right manner. And that's so important. One of the things I've always believed as my career has grown, and I've gone through all these different places, is it's most important to solve the problem as close to where the problem exists so that it's no longer a problem. And if we do that, we're winning. Um, so resistance to change. Change is hard, but it's not impossible. Um, one of the things I think I've learned over my career is that we stay stuck in patterns. We get used to a particular way of doing things and we start to think like, that's how you do this thing. And so it starts to become really, really hard to not do this thing that way. And so how do you change that? Well, I believe you stage change. You make it so that like, we're gonna change this part of this thing now, and then we're gonna ch change this next section later, and then we're gonna do this next thing. So we're going to uh, start investigating all the different things that we can do with Confluence, and then maybe we're gonna do some research around other tools, and then we're gonna maybe use these other tools here and these other tools and Confluence there. And so each stage of the change happens like predictably, and it comes along, but you have to do it purposefully. Because if you stage a change and then like, you have this indecision moment between stage one and stage two, like that's a, that's a stopper. Um, if it's not broken, why are we fixing it? So you have to constantly remind people of the value of what you're doing. You have to constantly say, we're doing this for a purpose, we're doing this for a reason, we're reaching for this big, hairy, audacious goal. And then finally, um, I don't think I can do that. 
A lot of people don't want to be UI copywriters. They're really great technical writers. They do great jobs like writing in-depth content that's clear, concise, well-written, and they're just like, they get to UI copy and they kind of freak out a little. And so enhance those people. Those people are valuable. Like they're valuable, they matter. And, and like make sure like you're enhancing their skills and then bring them into the design meetings and make them less afraid and get them to do some card sorting even if they're uncomfortable. Get them to talk up at design sparring even if they're uncomfortable. Like enhance their skills a little bit of a time, but make sure to give everyone some cake. Give everyone something that they're passionate about doing. When I bring a new member onto my team, one of the first things I ask them is, do you have something you're working on that you feel passionate about, that you love, that when you wake up and you think like, I'm gonna work on this thing today, they're excited, you're excited and, and, and ready to do that. And if they say no, then we find them something. And we don't make it just a, a, an ethereal thing like you have this 20% to work on. No, you make it a priority. You make sure that that is a thing they are working on. They are actively working on. It's a part of their backlog. It's a part of their regular work. They follow through with their OKRs. Because if it's just this ethereal thing, it starts to look like, well, I've got my backlog and I just can't do that. Okay, so making Confluence behave. Um, this isn't gonna be a tools talk, so bear with me. Um, design influence, one of the things that design has helped us do is um, rethink the way that we think about documentation. We've been using Confluence now for quite a few years um, to deliver all of our documentation. And it's done a great job. Um, it's an effective tool. Anybody can contribute to it. It is still a wiki style um, con contribution model. And so it makes it super easy for everyone to contribute to. But it looks like this. Um, and so design has helped us really think about because we want to influence the rest of the company, we had to start by influencing ourselves. And so design helped us get from that to this. A much more clear, crisp, better use of white space, better use of color balancing. Um, and then the other thing that you'll see here is we use all of our own AGG elements, all of our own Atlassian design uh, guideline elements for callouts, for warnings, for everything else. It's the same you'll see in our docs as you'll see in our software. And that's a big part of us beginning this process to influence the rest of the company. So that when we, when we say like, we think uh, the basic information uh, message should be formatted in X way, like we can show, like we do that already in our docs and then we can influence the ADG writ large so that what the company produces as, an, as a design guideline also includes all of IX's influence. Um, and we did that using this, scroll viewport. Um, we also customed uh, our CSS and we did some other tweaks. But one of the things that we've really started to learn, so we do all of our developer docs, um, not all, we do, uh, Bitbucket Connect is a documentation set I work on, and we write uh, Bitbucket Connect in Markdown using a harp transition, and then we port that into a Confluence instance um, as a static site. <clears throat> so we do a lot of hammering and chiseling. And what I've come to believe is that you connect, you integrate, <clears throat> and you develop. Um, first, you connect. You connect with the people who are already building things on your platform that make the, your platform do the thing you want it to do, right? You, you connect with your own vendors. They're already doing amazing things for your own customer. Like, use them. Um, and so we work a lot with K15. Um, we use their scroll viewport, scroll versions, scroll this, scroll that, scroll the other thing. Um, we use a lot of their products. Um, we work with several other, um, excuse me, other plugin developers. Um, and then we integrate with tools that'll make us better. So things like Optimizely and um, Google Analytics, of course, and um, all these other research. And uh, so we, we've integrated with Navalytics to do hotspot tracking and uh, watch people as they're using our site to understand how they navigate through our site and uh, get better research data. <clears throat> and then finally, we do, our, we do um, some of our own development because we make Confluence. So, when we find something new that really works, we, we work with our developers to uh, first to dog food that on our staging instance and move it over just like anything else. And several of those things have become features. And then a lot of our, some of the cake that I give to members of my team is one of them writes a, a Python script that we use to do uh, English standardization. So it searches through all of our spaces and finds all the Australian uh, spellings Australian English spellings of different words and it pulls them out and notifies us of what they are. Um, so 
there's all different kinds of ways to hammer and chisel on your existing tool set. And then sometimes you have to find something different. Um, so now I'm gonna talk a lot about what IX means to me. Um, IX to me is a lot more than a fancy title. Um, it is about the information experience. It's about a new way of thinking about information. Um, it's not just a fancy title. It's about gathering, ga gathering data um, so that you know ahead of time what your docs uh, look like. The, one of the first things that I did uh, with the Bitbucket doc set was I did an in-depth analysis. I pulled all the Google Analytics for every single page, listed them all out, looked at what kind of like, broke it down by concept task and reference, broke it down again by, uh, by navigation path, broke it down again, broke it down again, broke it down again, gathered more and more data to really understand what our users were using and how they were getting from one thing to another. Um, and then it's about setting direction. So this is content strategy. And way back when I very first started and we had that first meeting, we wrote what we called a brief at that time. And essentially the brief turned out to be the exact same thing that when we hired an amazing content strategist named Elle Garrity, um, she came up with the content canvas. And I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, that's the brief. That's what we did like two years ago. So really, really often we know what it is that are the great elements of great documentation. We already know that. Now, I'm, that's not to, to say that like Elle's a gift to us straight from heaven. Like she's helped us organize information and do it with a purpose and having one really good professional person to guide that is essential. But we're all content strategists. We all set a direction because we know our content and our audiences better than anybody. Um, and then we like, <clears throat> excuse me, we make everything measurable. To the extent that it's possible, we wanna know how they came to our docs, like did they come from this link in the UI? How, how many times did this link you in, in the UI get clicked? How are they navigating through it? Uh, who uses our tutorials and how? Make everything measurable. And then of course, it's about writing for platforms. Um, we're just now, we just now released our very first mobile app um, at uh, <clears throat> Atlas Camp, our developer conference. And so, we have a whole team of people learning how to write for platforms and learning how to write for mobile. And we have an IX core group that's, that uh, does research and starts uh, looking at all the different examples of mobile writing and how we're gonna make that happen for us. And the next thing we do is we work like designers. We do card sorting, we do sparring. Um, one of the great things that I've had to learn how to do is be a team lead in San Francisco managing people in Austin and Sydney and then spar that content. And so what we do is we have a live meeting and we use a Confluence instance and we do inline comments. Um, and so you make your deep dive comments on the thing and then we all get together and we spar and everybody chooses one thing about that doc that they wanna point out. And so we go around the room and everybody says what that one thing is, whether it's a good thing or a, a negative thing. Like, and, and we take that feedback and we engage with each other and it's amazing how much better you can make your documentation and how we share with each other. And finally, and I think this is the most important thing, we connect stories. We connect things to each other. We connect the getting get right site to how we write the Git tutorials for Bitbucket, to how we write the Git tutorials for SourceTree, to how we share information across from marketing, to when Tim Pedersen, one of our amazing developer advocates, writes a new blog post about how to do branching, we start right away on a tutorial about how to do branching based on that blog post. So that we're starting, and, and like this journey is just beginning, so we're just starting this process, but we connect everything. So that when you come to any part of information about any product of ours, our goal is like you always feel at home. You always feel like, oh, I'm at Atlassian and I'm gonna learn this thing or this is gonna help me. And, and that's always your experience with information. Um, and then it also happens that you have to work with every other team. So our IX teams work with everybody. We work with the marketing teams to help understand how, uh, just recently I helped with a redo of Bitbucket's uh, homepage. So before you've logged in, the main homepage, um, and IX has an influence there, and we talk about different terminology, and we talk about uh, different approaches and what's true and what's, you know, what you can't say. Um, and, uh, and it's a great relationship. Now, we don't do marketing. We don't write the marketing copy. We're not in this to take over the world. We're in this to influence the world and to connect things. And so we also work with our product teams, of course. Um, it, it's a little bit like I love, everybody here has talked about you know, making your docs a product. And so for us, our docs are a part of the product. It's directly a part of the product. It, it's like when you develop a feature, you're developing documentation at the same time. 
Um, it's, you know, the docs are still their own product, but we really look at it like a holistic part of the experience. Um, and then we work with our design teams, of course, because we are a part of our design team. Um, but there's a, very, there's, a, there's a little bit of a breakdown between the two because the designers have the final say on certain aspects and we have final say on other aspects. Um, and so far, that's actually been working out. Um, and of course, we work with our engineering teams. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, most of us are writers. Like, we're writers at our heart. Um, and that's a good thing. Um, even when we're not acting like writers, because very often we have to act like data scientists, or we have to act like support engineers, or we have to act like content strategists, or we have to act like designers, or we have to act like and think like product managers, or we have to act like and think like engineers, or, 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 and it goes on and on, because we're beginning to make these connections. One of the things, like, even all the way back at IBM, one of the first things I noticed as a technical writer was that my badge got me into almost every office. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Why does my badge get me into, like, all these different secured places? And then I started to think about that, and I started to connect it to the fact that, like, we're connected to everybody. So information, my, what, what IX is to me, information is, a critical, is critical to the user experience. The information experience includes everything needed to understand, support, market, and use that product. It includes everything. Every way that a user experiences information is a part of the information experience. And so that's what IX means to me. <clears throat> so where is Atlassian going with this? We want to influence all the things. Um, this is the only really cute GIF I had, I think. Um, and it's not even a GIF. Uh, <clears throat> We want to influence everything. We don't want to take over the world. God knows we don't want that. But we want to influence things. We want to connect marketing to support. And we want to connect product to design. And we want to connect, we want to connect all these things and brand and everybody. And so what we're, what we're doing is we've created an IX toolkit that the whole company can use. And it includes things like the ADG. Now IX is a major part, a major contributor to Atlassian's design guidelines. We've contributed to the word list, we've contributed to how messaging works, we've contributed to um, how UI copy is, <clears throat> is structured. Um, we are beginning to work on putting all the placeholder text into all the examples so that when you, and uh, when you download the Atlassian user interface pack, like you have all of the IX examples in there. Um, and then we also went a little bit further and we created a a content guideline and a content model and a voice and tone and product management and all about viewport and how we're making Confluence do all these different things. And we share that with the whole company. <clears throat> One of the biggest wins I think we've had over the last year was influencing the uh, Atlassian design guidelines. So that when we say designing and design an Atlassian experience, you're also getting the information experience as a part of that um, education. Um, so if you go to des um, design at atlassian.com, like, you'll get this. Um, we created a voice and tone card that we, I, I wish I'd have brought physical cards with me. These are physical cards that we hand out to everybody. Um, so anybody who's writing copy, they can, they can look and see what a, what a blank slate should contain, what its purpose is, and then it, they'll get some really good examples of what good blank slate text looks like. And we share that kind of stuff with the rest of the company. And that's how we begin to influence and we build partnerships and we make those connections. Um, it's an amazing journey. Um, and so when you know it's working is in a thing like Design Week. Um, every year Atlassian puts on a big conf internal conference for all of its design team. And this year, IX was involved. And IX did about one third of the presentations. And so I ran a panel on managing content like code. And in our panel, we had, uh, <clears throat> we had a developer, an IXer, a DevDocs lead, and another IXer. And we talked, and all of the designers came. Like every, one, every IX workshop that we gave was fully attended by designers and developers, and they were engaged and interested. And it was amazing. And it just showed that IX and design are now in love. And, uh, and that love is, is starting to spread throughout the rest of the company as we work with brand. And El Garrity starts to work on like creating content strategy across the company. And of course, we all get together in our smaller teams and we have some fun. Um, amazing things don't happen individually. Amazing things happen in teams. 
this is my team. I couldn't do very much without these people. Um, these people make me look good every single day. And so, and each one of them like contributes to the amazing Atlassian information experience. We gather together and we talk with our product designers and we meet with our engineers and we meet with our marketing teams. Every one of these people on my team does that. I'm not the only one doing it, like every single one. Caitlin like met with our voice of the customer all on her own, created an entire research project, executed that project, and now we know our, how our NPS score affects documentation, and we have a modal to like run constantly against that, so every documentation comment from NPS comes straight to us, and we know, and we can monitor that. <clears throat> we did surveys and metrics, and Kevin and uh, Ashley have done amazing things with Jira. John has done great things. Paul is a script writer. Michalina has helped us uh, just recently. Uh, we launched Bitbucket Pipelines, which is our own continuous integration solution. And she did tons of research with all kinds of customers and users and to find out what the best approach for an information solution for that product would be. So if you're up for an adventure, you're welcome to come and join us. There's one more thing that I wanted to say since I was the last uh, speaker, and, and that's you. Yes, you. You are so very valuable. That is what this whole thing is about, right? We come together, and one of the things I fell in love with Write the Docs is like, everybody's valuable. Everybody that provides information, the information that we provide is valuable to customers. And because it's valuable to customers, it's valuable to our companies, and it's valuable to us. And so, don't forget, you are valuable. Thank you.